I haven't been able to get myself out of a rut recently. Everything has been absolutely miserable since my wife divorced me. I don't have any money. She took all of that from me. I can barely afford the house that I live in right now. It's been raining a lot more frequently lately. I wonder how much longer I can last before I can no longer supply myself with a shelter to protect me from it. I don't think I can fathom why it happened very clearly. I don't know how much I'm capable of critically understanding right now. I feel so devoid of life. My wife was so happy with me. Angela was her name. She was perfect. We'd spent so much time with each other. She was always there for me, through everything that came our way. And she knew that I was willing to do the same for her. So then why? Why would someone so perfect leave me? I feel so defeated. I can't help it. I can't shake this feeling of worthlessness. I know. It's childish. I know that I have my own values as a person, and my worth is not to be determined by someone else, not by any means. At least that's what my logic tells me. But my feelings do what they want anyways. It's so idiotic. It's so stupid. I hate myself. Why can't I just do what logically sounds right? Why can't I just turn off this pointless heartbreak I wanted to stop? When someone who spent so much time with you who's loved you through everything, suddenly stops out of nowhere. It strips a part of you away. It destroys a part of who you are. It's like a death in the family, almost. I hate it. So much. I've lost something that I don't know I'll ever be able to replace. I feel like half of me is gone. And I don't know how I'll ever manage to get it back. This is pointless. I am pointless. Angela was the one who brought most of the money into the household. She worked with a big business in advertising. Angela was the sort of woman who got together with her co-workers at a large desk and devised a plan to put it into action. She would make sure that everything followed through and was a very helpful asset to her company. She still is, most likely. Meanwhile, I was an author. I wrote and published many novels in my day. She would inspire me in every way. So, I always had plenty of ideas to continue publishing. Now I'm relying on the royalty payments of books that I've already sold to keep myself financially afloat. Since Angela left me, I haven't really found any inspiration anymore. I can't find any real reason to continue living. My passions are for naught. My finances are spiraling downhill. What purpose is there in leading this pointless life? I'm gonna kill myself tonight. I'll see you later in heaven. If they'll even let me in. It's night now. I've got the noose ready. I'm getting myself emotionally prepared. I'm in my bedroom now. It's a mess. My bed isn't made. My clothes are all over the floor. There are pieces of garbage all over my desk. My computer doesn't seem very clean either. It needs some serious dusting, but whatever. It's odd. I thought that it would feel more stressful. I thought that it would be more dramatic. A bigger deal than it is to me. I guess things are always less dramatic in real life, aren't they? Not nearly as poetic and graceful as I had envisioned it in my head. But the storms seem to be cooling down. I think I'm ready. Huh? Hmm, that's weird. There's a black cat in my windowsill. It isn't really doing much. It's only staring at me. It needs to get out of here. I have to do this. I need to do this. Its eyes are big and green. The bluish silver moon is shining behind its head as it sits patiently in silence. The feline is flicking its tail to and fro. There's something deafening about its lack of words. I feel like it's waiting for something. So God knows that I'm trying to kill myself, and he brings this cat here to watch me while I do it. 
He's waiting for me to die. This taunting is too cruel. Why won't it go away? Its eyes bore into mine. I can feel my soul quivering underneath the intangible power this thing possesses. I can feel it in the atmosphere. I can sense it in my heart. And through all of this maddening spiritual pressure, I can tell that it wants something from me. I can't pinpoint what it is. I'm not gonna let him in. Does it want me to kill myself right now? Does it really want to watch? Does it really want to watch me while I do it? Is that all this thing is here to do? It just wants to tempt me closer to suicide, nothing else? Why? Why would God create such a despicable thing? The cat continues to simply stare at me. Large emerald eyes gaze at me through a dirty glass window. It knows how to do nothing else, only to be a silent observer to events that it has no business observing. It has no business here. I'm sick of all this nonsense. I watch the cat to see if it will do anything else. It cocks its head ever so slightly, as though it's surprised that I actually met its gaze evenly. Its eyes are darting around frivolously, like it sees something that I can't. The black-furred creature continues this as I glare at it. Can it see my soul? Is it afraid of my anger, my sorrow, my anguish? I hoped it was. But then it returned to its previous stance. It continuously scrutinized my every move with cautious and composed eyes. It wasn't afraid of me. I felt a part of my rage and sorrows melt, if ever so briefly. I was starting to feel bad. Did this cat really deserve all of this anger? Was it necessary that I was so mad at this creature? I wanted to kill myself. I wanted to die. This thing was only passing by. Was it really here to watch me die? Or was it here to keep me alive? Staring into its eyes, I can't help but be reminded of Angela. Her eyes were green as well. She would gaze at me with that same expectant look, always. Whenever I had come up with a new, glamorous idea, she would study me in waiting of something grand and marvelous. She never once doubted my creative ability when she was there with me. Her eyes would pour her soul into mine, like water into a glass. But why? God damn it, why did she leave me? I can't believe that I lost something so perfect. I can't believe that someone who had that much faith in me was already gone forever. We'd only been married for a few years. I must be miserable in maintaining a relationship. I can't believe myself, I'm so pitiful. I always was this pitiful, wasn't I? I had been diagnosed with depression that I never grew out of when I was a teenager. It stuck with me for the rest of my life well into my twenties now. It was like a childish fad that I could never grow out of, a phase that never passed. Maybe that's why. She left me because of the chemicals that were beyond my control. I must have been like chains holding her back from pursuing greatness in her business career. Dealing with depression is exhausting for the person experiencing the symptoms, but I never thought about how it could impact those around me. Especially not the woman I loved, who I thought could handle these intense feelings of melancholy and misery. So that's why. That's why she left me. That makes so much sense. I should have known from the start that this wouldn't work. I never should have tried to hold down a relationship, and now I've lost everything because of it. I look at the silent watcher with tears staining my defeated eyes. It communicates with me briefly and fleetingly. It flicks its tail again, its paws placed gracefully in front of its body, sitting tall and steady. Its eyes resonate some sort of aura of understanding. It's like all of my sorrows, all of my anguish, the reason why my wife left me, all my creative struggles as an author. All of it is already in the mind of this creature. It knows all of my woes already. It somehow understands through this silence. Then it should understand why I want to kill myself too. If it's truly aware of all the hell that I've been through, if it grasps just how much I've truly lost, 
Then I should have no quarrels with me ending the pain. Please. Please, I'm begging you. I just want to stop hurting. I want everything to stop. I'm tired of living my life as a failure. I'm tired of constantly being weighed down by the chains of my own mind. Please. I need this. <laughs> I'm crying now. The tears flow from my eyes like all my lamentation finally took physical form. Tears scar my cheeks and stain me with grief. My mind tore its way from my skull and dripped out in front of me like a broken faucet. I'm so empty. I don't have the strength to keep living. I feel the weight of the beholder crushing me. I can feel its patience dwindling into ash like wood into the growing fires of its cravings. Its yearning is almost suffocating. I hyperventilate, taking shallow, panicked breaths. I know what I have to do. I have to make a choice. To live my life, trapped forever in the prison that is my broken mind, or to die and free myself of these chains. To find hope amongst the hopeless. I have to do something. I have to. I don't know what the right answer is. I can't find it within myself. Its emerald green eyes scream demandingly into my head, ripping apart my already fractured psyche. Oh god, it hurts so much. I want to break it to pieces. I can feel myself trembling under his weight. I ask him the only thing that I can think of. I ask for guidance in a mind so confused. In this sea of darkness and misery where I am lost, I ask for a light to shine upon a path that I can follow. Whether it leads to salvation or damnation doesn't matter to me anymore. What do you want from me? The eyes on looking my broken soul continue to stare at my daft confusion. The energy from within the four-legged creature twists and turns inside me, gathering the broken fragments in my head. It blinks slowly and methodically, and with much patience. Steadily, the shards all begin to melt, welding themselves into a single entity. Things begin to make sense. The hell that is my mind is becoming a peaceful solution. The scattered chaos has all met at one point. The noose sways solemnly. The dust on my desk swirls in the dim light of the moon. The cat spills out its shadow across my wall. My wife's eyes beam at me through the inky dark feline. I understand now what I must do.